goals that you did last season. The goals against and the shots against were way up. Is that something you need to change? Is that is is that all just injuries, or are, no. is, are there elements of this team that need to be adjusted? No, I, I think when you get better offensively, sometimes you think about the other, or you forget about the other end of the ice a little bit, and that's something we'll address. We've we've uh, had exit meetings with our players. Uh, the coaches have done the same. We will sit with the coaches, and uh, we know um, as a club defense wins. It'd be nice to score the same amount of goals and be a lot better defensively. I think we were 25th in goals against. Um, that's not good enough. You know, we have to be better than that. We have the ability to be better than that. And uh, what played into it, we're going dis to discuss that, figure it out, find out if it's a weakness, is it a style, is it whatever it was, but we'll figure it out. We have to be better defensively than what we showed this year. That had been the staple of this club the previous two seasons. You know, we worked hard, we kept the puck out of the net and stayed in games. This season, we kind of got into shootouts sometimes, gave up goals early. I think our discipline has to be better. I think we took too many penalties as a group. That has to change. It has to be better. It puts too much stress and pressure on your club. But there's things that we'll talk about hockey-wise to, uh, to know to, to be a better club next year. I mean, we can be a better club, but we have to play in certain areas better than what we showed for sure. When you look at the adversity you guys suffered through this season, and at the end of the year, you guys are above 500, could you make the argument that Perhaps this season was a better indicator of Todd Richards' coaching ability and the, the control he has on this group, maybe even more so than the playoff season? Uh, I, adversity always reveals character in coaching staff, too, and I, I think they've done a good job with our team staying positive and, and going through the tough times and, and staying focused and, and turning the ship around once we got a little healthier and, and uh, finished strong. So, you know, I... I we respect this, the job that they've done. Um, you know, it's it's tough for everybody who involved with the team when, when you have adversity, when you have injuries, when you, uh, I don't know, we used 43 players this year. It's a, it's a revolving door almost when, when you go through that many players and you have to put together line combinations, defense pairings, uh, new power play units, new penalty killing units, all those things that, that, that go into coaching and decisions they have to make. They, they start their day every day here at, at 7 a.m. or 7.30 in the morning if we come back a little later from the road and they think about those things. And, and uh, you know, when you don't know what you have for personality, it makes it even harder. But, but our coaching staff's done a good job. And, and um, you know, our training staff, with the, all the injuries, they've done a great job. Um, we've had a lot of guys uh, gone for second opinions with some of the injuries that um, that they've had and they're entitled to it. And they all came back um, with the same answer or the same diagnosis that they had from our doctors, which to us is a strong indication of, of, of the decisions that they've made, the professionalism. Um, our training staff, both on the medical side and the uh, equipment side, done a great job. It, it makes it harder for everybody. Um, 43 jerseys sewn, you know, never knowing what letters you're going to put in the above the uh, the number. When I when I tell them that okay, we got this guy coming now and playing, and and you got two hours to make it make a new jersey, it makes it hard for everybody. But but you know, all those guys doing a great job. They've stayed positive through it all, and and we got a great great group of guys in the in the locker room and surrounding the locker room with the professionals that we have doing various roles and jobs. Uh, that are very important to the success of this team. Hi, Dave. This is similar to Brian's question. And, and, you know, we all saw the players get better on the ice, but everybody going through that adversity, Yarmo, has to get better. How did you guys upstairs get better and the coaching staff? I mean, they, they say if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, right? So how did you guys get stronger and better and, and maybe make the whole organization stronger? Yeah, what you have to do, and it sounds simple, but you have to preach without question patience because um, – you know, if you go into a boxing match and the other guy's got a nice big set of gloves on and you've got oven mitts on, it's it's a tough fight. And um, we 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 put ourselves into a position where we had a, a chance to watch opportunity for players. And there's some players that really jumped out at us. Dan Winberg would be the first two as far as youth goes. Um, one of the things we've – two things have happened here in the last couple of days is we've met with every player. And to a man, they love our locker room, and they really want to be Blue Jackets. 
And these are, these are a lot of different players that have different roles. The other thing is that we have stressed to our players, every one of them, that our depth chart going into camp is going to be deeper than it's ever been. So there's going to be some jobs won and some jobs lost. And so it's up to the player to really take the off season, starting in a couple of weeks after they relax a bit and get to it. Every aspect of the game to be prepared to come into camp and earn a spot. And this isn't just uh, a group of management people talking about the hope to, uh, to develop a team that's better. It's genuine. There's, there's not a lot of spots for a lot of players, and a lot of them are good players. And every one of those players, including the ones that, are, that didn't play a lot or dressed and then didn't dress or whatever, every single one of them really want to be a Blue Jacket. They like the room. They like the coaching. They like the uh, city. They like everything about this. And that tells us some really good things. We, we tried to be patient through this thing, even though everybody got frustrated with sound reasoning. And uh, we, we could have traded some young players or picks. Uh, we, we traded a Leopold, Yarmo did, for a Leopold for a fifth, but got a fifth back when, when we traded him back to Minnesota. There was things there that we tried to do to, to, to hang in, to do things, but not jeopardize our future. Um, and I'm proud of Yarmo for that. We, we didn't give up much. We, we, we have a draft coming up that's, that's got six picks in the first three rounds. We've had good drafts the last couple of years. I think the future, because of that, by being patient and having an understanding of what the reality was, has put us into a position to not only build a club that's going to compete, but be a club that's going to compete for a long time. Uh, you, you can, when your window opens, you can try to, if you're rich on young forwards, maybe make a deal and bring in a defenseman if necessary. Uh, we went through that in St. Louis. But you've got to have those assets in place to be able to do it. And if we don't build those up, you can't do it. Then you have a less of an opportunity to become a better organization and a better team. So I, 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 I like where we are with that aspect being uh, talked about. But we had to go through some very trying times, very trying times. A lot of late nights sitting up there talking about what, what can we do. You know, when, when you go through the – and I'm a little long-winded, I apologize. But when you go through – trials and tribulations of an organization and you go this one has never gone through I've never been part of a team that's lost over 500 man games especially to key people and I credit the ones that played all the way through um, hope hope is a great word it's a very interesting word in sports you go into games you hope you can win or you know you can win but when you lose hope hope becomes a four-letter word and that's really hard it's really hard for a lot of different people to whether you're a pro athlete or not, it's hard when you're, when you're losing hope. And we went through all that at various times. And now, since the dust has settled, that four-letter word seems to be gone. I think there's a lot of hope here. Hope's a good word for me right now, going into next season. And, and it's genuine. I'm not sitting here trying to make things up. I'm not sitting here like it was three years ago where we were trying to build this thing a brick at a time. We've got a good group here. We have a chance to really do damage. We have a chance to be a very proud organization going forward.